Hello students, welcome to the EPG Partshalla. I am Professor Indarveer Malan from the Central University of Himachal Pradesh. Today we are going to learn in this module Rule of Special and Research Libraries in Transformation of Parent Organization into a Learning Organization under paper Special and Research Libraries. The objectives of this module are to familiarize the learners regarding the need and importance of developing a learning culture. This module describes how learning culture can promote knowledge intensive work processes, evolve best practices and trigger innovation. It highlights the significance of learning organization to live through and thrive in the hyper competitive world. It explains the role of organization's leadership and obligations of employees in the process of metamorphosis of an organization into a learning organization. It portrays how special or research libraries can play a pivotal role in developing a learning culture and transformation of the organization into a learning organization and which other stakeholders can contribute and work in unison in such a transformation process. Now let us discuss introduction to this module. Growing globalization, hyper competition, technological turbulences, shortening life cycles of products, frequent value addition in services are leading to increasing need for learning for various organizations to survive and thrive. Efforts are required at all levels including management, leadership and employees to develop a culture of learning at the organization. At the personal level, all employees must make efforts to enhance their expertise, upgrade their knowledge, hone their skills and enhance their competence to perform better. Arrange Management must have policies in place that help to identify the learning needs, encourage learning and desired training and rewards better performance using enhanced expertise. The management should also provide adequate learning resources and tools that facilitate specific learning requirements. The institution leadership must motivate and inspire employees for learning as it will help to increase the organization's expertise, facilitate knowledge intensive work practices, trigger innovation and cutting edge knowledge and ideas generation. In the present times where uncertainty rules the environment, pacing with new useful technologies is essential, timely adaptation to change and adopting better tools and techniques of work is helpful, continuous learning and acquisition of knowledge in one's domain of work is necessary. Now human obsolescence and upgradation. Human expertise helps to competently run the organizations and bring change for the better. If human expertise becomes absolute, the organizations stagnate. Human obsolescence is as common as that of machines. If efforts that implies, if it reflects that F implies also required to upgrade their knowledge, renew and develop new improved version of their expertise, conforming to new work performance requirements. Employees who do not learn are also not only left behind in their career paths, but they also, if they are in quite a good number, they also make the organization backwards. Forward looking organizations and expertise gaps. Forward looking organizations normally place high value on talent, competence, and experience in their recruitments. As when talented people join the organization, innovative work practices generally automatically take place. Organizations also require to identify the expertise gaps 
and quickly fill those gaps through talent optimization of the existing staff or through new recruitments. Expertise gaps are a recurring phenomena in organizations as new skill sets are required with technological advances and also to fill the technological hiatus when some person will retire or leave the organization. Expertise desired and vision of the organization. Acquisition and optimization of expertise must conform to the vision and roadmap of growth of the organization. It should also be strategically linked to processes that propel the growth of the planned targets and visualize growth trajectory. Expertise optimization is thus not merely concerned with learning but more importantly what is required to be learned over a period of time and timely put to use the knowledge, competence and skills acquired. Educational accomplishments and real workplace skills desired. There are normally enormous differences between the theory and principles grasped and ideas learned through formal education and work performance requirements and reality at workplaces. A sizable part of formal education find least utility at workplaces. The workplace practices involve the routinized actions, situation-specific decision-making, experiential learning, on-the-job training, strategies formulation by managers, and their implementation with the use of tacit knowledge of experts. Experiential knowledge and innovative approaches. Experiential knowledge gained from learning by doing, learning from failures and setbacks, and how new things were handled and what way those would have been better handled generally helps to guide the work practices for the future. But this is not enough. Integration of prior knowledge, new learning, learning from workplace situations, and then reflection on them, keeping in view the interest of the organization, helps to create new approaches and innovative ways of handling work. Learning for all levels of employees. Learning is now required for all levels of employees of an organization. Every human being has an urge to learn and potential to do better, provided work ecology provides opportunities for learning for everyone. Moreover, generation of new knowledge and ideas is not only the prerogative of top management and researchers only. Every employee with a perceptible mind can create new ideas and knowledge through keen observation of existing situations, experience of work processes, and through reasoning and logic. A learning culture is created by an organization's personal values, customs, and practices. If created and sustained, it can have a dominion effect on individuals and motivate them to upgrade their knowledge, hone their skills, and enhance their competencies. In its combined effect, it increases the competence level of the organization and helps it to move to next level of performance and facilitate its transition to a better organization. Let us take up what are the advantages of learning organization and a learning culture. A learning culture develops an attitude, behavior among employees to continuously explore ways of doing things in a better way and bringing improvement in their processes and practices. It develops a culture of knowledge sharing and leveraging advantage from the knowledge and ideas of each other. It encourages employees for collective efforts to solve organizations' problems and meets its challenges. It prepares the organization to meet the challenges of competitors and act timely. It helps in transition to change and in change management. It provides a facilitating environment for learning for employees, build confidence among them and makes them more capable through continuous learning. It helps to identify the learning 
and unlearning needs of employees. It provides enabling environment for generation of new knowledge and creation of strategic ideas for advancement of the organization. It motivates employees for self-initiatives to upgrade their knowledge and identify their learning and training requirements. Now let us discuss why learning culture. Competitive and rapid changes in technologies compel organizations to learn faster. Competitive environment demands knowledge-based work activities and well-informed decision-making. Learning culture helps to have awareness of technological advances, wisely plan, timely act, and think ahead of times. It gives employees access to tools, technologies, and knowledge resources that improve learning and knowledge sharing. It provides an enabling environment for learning. How to create and sustain learning culture? Management, leadership, and human resource management department plays a crucial role in developing and sustaining a learning culture. They have plans in place that support and innovate ways of working. And if the positive plans are implemented to create an adequate learning culture, definitely the institution can develop a learning culture in the institution. Human resource management must identify the training needs and learning opportunities for employees and facilitate the same. Investments in learning opportunities should not be merely for acquisition of knowledge but linked to performance outcomes. Organizations should undertake documentation of best practices and lessons learned from failures and setbacks. International positioning, placement of implies and team building should be in a way that encourage learning. Inbuilt mechanism be developed that encourage socializing and sharing of knowledge, for example, tea and lunch meetings at the organization. Build talent teams that automatically lead to exchange of ideas and learning. Linking of expertise enhancement and improved performance with recognition and reward system of the institution is helpful. Respect individual employees' positive criticism, potential ideas, and encourage them for personal and professional development. Linking of learning opportunities with the choices and interests of the learners on one hand and operations of the organization on the other hand is useful. Thoroughly understand organization's behavior and individual traits while planning learning resources and opportunities. Follow a mix of strategies and initiatives for creating a learning culture because some people have natural flair for learning. Others are motivated for learning with work achievement related incentives. Still others are learning when they face challenging situations. Let us take up barriers to learning. Learning cannot be ensured by imposing training on some employees who are not interested in such training. Organizations where individualistic culture exists, mistakes and failures are considered liabilities rather than learning opportunities, make no headway in creating a learning environment. Lack of range of supportive mechanisms for learning such as knowledge repositories, intranets and relevant high quality knowledge resources is also a problem area. Management styles where Finding faults with individuals rather than undertaking systemic improvements in the system, that, that, that is also a barrier for creating a knowledge culture. Some busy executives are so overloaded with work that they rarely find time for their own learning. Lack of policies and strategies for learning is also a barrier. Lack of competitive environment within the organization. Lack of facilities for an on-demand training and real-time learning also creates impediments. Lack of incentives for generating new useful ideas and non-existence of fair recognition and reward system. Another barrier is lack of adequate tools and technologies that facilitate learning. Knowledge sharing. Adequate learning environment not only promotes learning but also leads to sharing of knowledge among workers. 
in large organizations it also helps to identify the tacit knowledge and expertise of workers and adequately utilize such knowledge in the interest of the organization a former ceo of hp computers once said if we knew what we know hp computers would have been three times more profitable economic impact of learning and learning resources learning resources and initiatives pay rich dividends in organizations that encourage and facilitate learning for instance eureka project at xerox is a learning facilitation system 15000 service technicians contribute to and search a system containing 50000 tips and techniques not documented in service manuals use of this system resulted in 10% reduction in labor and parts costs assuming a 10% profit margin and flat revenue a 10% reduction in costs would result in a 100% increase in profitability of xerox services business now what is a learning organization peter sinch who propounded the concept of learning organization defined it as the organization where people continuously expand their capacity to create the results they truly desire where new and expansive patterns of thinking are nurtured where collective aspirations is set free and where people are continuously learning to see the whole together now let us take up the learning organizations characteristics learning organizations develop as a result of pressures which are being faced by the organizations these days for enabling them to remain competitive in the present day business environment the learning organization encourages a more interconnected way of thinking such organizations become more like a family or a community to which employees are committed employees commitment make them work hard improve efficiency to further the cause of the organization in the words of peter sage himself the rate at which organizations learn may become the only sustainable source of competitive advantage components of a learning organization the five components of a learning organization put forward by peter sage are systems thinking personal mastery mental models building shared vision team learning systems thinking is a conceptual cornerstone of a learning organization it is the discipline that integrates all the employees of an organization fusing them into a coherent body of theory and practice systems thinking ability to comprehend and address the whole and to examine the interrelationships between parts provides for both incentive and means to integrate various disciplines in an organization now let us take up personal mastery organizations learn only through individuals who learn the commitment by an individual to the process of learning is known as personal mastery there is a competitive advantage for organization over other competing organizations if employees of the organization can learn more quickly individual learning is facilitated through employees training development and continuous self improvement it is important to develop a culture in organization where personal mastery is practiced in daily life people with high level of personal mastery live in a continual learning mode let us take up the next mental models the assumptions held by individuals and organization are called mental models to become a learning organization these models must be challenged similarly organizations tend to have memories which preserve certain behavior norms and values on creating a learning environment it is important to replace confrontational attitudes with open culture that promotes inquiry and trust unwanted values need to be discarded by the process called unlearning if the organization is to develop a capacity to work with mental models then it is necessary for employees to learn new skills and develop new orientations it needs to have openness and conversation that balance inquiry and advocacy 
let us take up the fourth point building a shared vision when there is a genuine vision as opposed to the familiar vision statement employees excel and learn not because they are told to but because they want to if one idea about leadership that has inspired organizations for thousands of years it is the capacity to hold a shared picture of the future the organization seeks to create the development of a shared vision is important in motivating the employees to learn as it creates a common identity that provides focus and energy for learning the practice of shared vision involves the skills of unearthing shared pet picture of the future that foster genuine commitment and enrollment rather than compliance taking the fifth and the last point team learning the benefit of team or shared learning is that employees grow more quickly and the problem solving capacity of the organizations improve through better access to knowledge and expertise when teams learn together then not only there are good results for the organization but the team members grow more rapidly which could not have happened otherwise the discipline of team learning starts with the dialogue the capacity of members of a team to suspend assumptions and enter into a genuine thinking together what are the advantages of a learning organization a learning organization is able to anticipate and manage change easily it remains competitive and can better tackle the onslaught of effects of competition from similar other organizations performance of organization remains qualitative it is in a better position to tackle internal and external problems and challenges individuals have knowledge of the state of the art technologies and developments in their work domains and have adequate confidence to perform their jobs it encourages learning and knowledge based work practices employees have opportunities to grow with growth of the organization pertaining to role of organization's leadership leadership is supposed to identify and integrate the diverse units of the organization and create a functional structure that facilitates learning build teams that improve efficiency promote learning and share ideas and knowledge focusing on the shared vision of the organization identify gaps in competence and skills and initiate efforts to recruit talent or optimize the expertise of existing staff constantly improve knowledge infrastructure and learning resources and tools identify barriers to learning and make realistic efforts to remove such barriers have liberal policies that help to align learning with the ways people want to learn we are discussing the obligations of employees an organization's competence and expertise is a combined balance sheet of individual employees competence and expertise to constantly enhance the organization's competence all employees therefore must identify the needs and take initiatives to continuously embrace their enhance their competence and expertise they may constantly upgrade their knowledge through self learning and if required may even demand training employees should identify the learning opportunities that exist within and outside the organization pertaining to their work practices and areas of expertise the role of special and research libraries library is an important component of knowledge infrastructure of a learning organization it can play a crucial role in transformation of an organization into a learning organization it builds the knowledge resources of the organization and align these resources with the specialized requirements of individual learners and teams it facilitates knowledge based solutions to problems by providing and reinforcing relevant knowledge resources library's role in building a knowledge base library maintains the organized learning resources in print and digital formats it may maintain the data center of the organization where all data is stored and made available online to authorized users 
it may develop institutional repository of the organization's publications manuals and other resources and maintain internet of the organization it may maintain databases of talks meetings videos of show how practices etc it may create need based virtual libraries and portals undertake documentation and storage of captured experiential knowledge and indigenous knowledge special and research libraries role in worthwhile information dissemination library may undertake documentation of quality evaluated filtered and focused valuable information and ideas that may motivate learners it may communicate such information to team leaders matching their work pursuits it should undertake information analysis and provide analyzed information to support various organizations programs and activities it may maintain wiki spaces that encourage sharing of ideas and information it may maintain online directory of ongoing research projects relevant to areas of operations of the parent organization the role of the special and research libraries in developing a knowledge architecture adequate knowledge architecture is essential for streaming of information from the library to various units and embedding relevant information in work processes and practices library may develop and improve the knowledge architecture of the organization that enhances the free flow of information it provides selective dissemination of information according to individual interests knowledge alignment through more careful observation of work practices and apply thoughts how work practices can be enhanced through integration of knowledge resources and services the role in supporting peter sang's concept of learning organization here we are discussing the role of special and research libraries how they are aligned to support the peter sang's concept of learning organization libraries plan and execute flow of information within an organization according to information systems and deploy and redeploy knowledge resources to strengthen the smooth functioning of the work practices and thereby support the concept of systems thinking libraries support personal mastery by providing access to select relevant knowledge resources and making available the need based information personalized reference service and sdi services further augment support for personal mastery empowering users with media and information literacy and a variety of other personalized services facilitate personal mastery now let us take up mental models by making available the latest information and access to knowledge resources that embody latest trends library facilitate identification of what required to be learned and unlearned regarding shared vision library may help to develop an excellent shared vision for the organization by capturing and documenting the vision of each employee pertaining to organization and after undertaking its content analysis regarding team building at the higher level better interface between organization's leadership and library leadership help to develop a collective understanding of how knowledge based services and information can make a difference in transforming the organization to a learning organization subject domain experts from the library may be part of research teams and instant information support so students let us now summarize what we have learned in this module organizations that transform to learning organization can survive and thrive in the present competitive era organizations must create and sustain a learning culture that motivates and supports for learning every personnel should have a personal commitment for self learning and organization should also take timely steps to support such learning requirements organizations library which is an important component of knowledge infrastructure of the organization should play a proactive role in transformation of the organization into a learning organization 
in playing a proactive role in this process it must work in unison with human resource development department and in the it unit of the organization on one hand and also the organization leadership on the other thank you very much